Lights! Camera! Action! Hang on for the loop! And I'm Jamie. You know, I bet people think that we just come in here and make all this up as we go. Why would they think that? Oh, I don't know, because we say things like, Grandma hair. Horseshoe specialist. Hang on to your tattoos, Tornado. Hey, you can't, you can't script that. But every time we film The Loop Show, we come in here, there is an actual script for us to follow and has things for us to say. Like this part in the script where it says there's a script yeah. that tells us what to say. Ah, oh, that's good. This is a show and all the world's a stage. And we have a director who tells us where to go. It's called blocking. Mm -hmm. She's right back there. And if I mess with the plan like this. Oh, she's going, she's going, she's going, she's gone. Hey, Jamie, come back, please. That's what she does. That's directing. I love having a sense of direction, kind of knowing where we're gonna go. Yeah, I like to have a general game plan for the day, but knowing that someone actually knows the directions for what is next is great. Wait. So, so what, is, what is next? I don't know. Crew, do you guys know what's next? <laughs> Throw to Josh. Josh. Uh, Start with the Josh, that's yeah, right. There uh, it is. So, thanks y'all. Check this out. Hey Luke, my name's Josh and I'm excited to get to hang out with you today. Have you guys ever wondered, what is my direction in life? Like, what is it that God has planned for me? It'd be nice if there was just like some clues or some easier way to help us figure that out. Well, I can tell you this, God's plan for your life starts with a who before a do. Check this out. If I'm called by God, what am I called to do? It must be something big. It must be something important. If you're taking notes, you may jot this down. We have to embrace the truth that calling is about who you are before what you do. When God calls you, He's calling you to a who before He's calling you to a do. This is crazy important. In fact, I love the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 1.9 when he, he said this, he said, for God saved us and called us. And let me tell you what he didn't say. He didn't say, for God saved you and called you to be a missionary to Africa. He might, but that's not what, 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 what Paul said. He didn't say you're called to be a second grade teacher or you're called to be a professional gamer. How cool would it be to get paid to play video games. Paul didn't say you're called to a, a task or a job. What he said is this, he said, for God saved us and called us to live a holy life. It's a who before a do. God did this not because we deserved it, scripture said, but because this was his plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. God called you to live a holy life. In other words, calling is as much about who you're becoming as it is about what you are doing. You're called to be holy. The Greek word is hagios. It means to be set apart. It means to be different. In other words, as you follow Jesus, you don't look like the world, you don't act like the world, you don't think like the world, you don't behave like the world. You're not driven by the things that other people are driven by because you've been set apart by God, called by Jesus, infused with the power of the Spirit of God to live a holy life. When you look at Scripture, it's crazy interesting to me that the Bible never talks about your calling for a career. The Bible talks about your calling to become like Jesus. It's a who before it is a do. So when you recognize you are called by God, a better question than starting with is, what am I called to do? A better question is, who am I called to become? Who is it that God wants me to become? because if calling is only about a do, it's gonna get really, really, really confusing. Not because we deserved it, but because 
myself was his plan Before there was time Before the beginning of time To show us grace in Jesus Christ For God saved us And he called us To live a holy life Before there was time For God saved me And he called me To live a holy life So if we directed the loop show, I would like to see Tanya do a challenge instead of us doing the challenge. And I would also like to see uh, Tommy in the bear costume more. Yeah, I would love to see like an epic mystery hand like saga. Like, like where does mystery hand go whenever they aren't presenting challenges? Like I want to mm. see that. Like, oh! oh. <laughs> Where are you going, Mr. Hill? Oh, I bet he's going on a journey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, it says, guess what? You're the director now. <gasps> ha! Uh, directing is simple. Just pick out the scripts, props, and wardrobe. We'll provide the actors and the blindfolds. Oh, yeah, you're directing the scene blindfolded. Uh, okay. Oh, All right, so we are blindfolded, as you can see, and we are going to have uh, some scripts and some props that we are going to select at random on this table over there while we have some assistance in getting over there. Oh, is it happening now? It is. We're great. Moving. I'm ready. Okay, great. Thank you. No, oh, I was like, no one's moving me. <laughs> All right, so, so we're grabbing our script. All right, and we need some props. Yeah, I feel like costume. I have That's no right. idea where I am. Am I touching something else? What do we need the uh, cart for? Great, this is what I touched. Okay, we have all of our stuff, and now we are going to give it to our actors. Someone get them out of the green room. Here you go. Here is your script. Thank Here you. Here is your crown. <laughs> really loved your previous work. I'm glad Nothing you're enough. here. Okay, I'll just hold on to it for a second. So Jamie and I are going to co-direct the project, and um, it's something that we've been really working on for really years. This has been taking years of development, and so uh, our talent is getting their wardrobe on. We wanted to get something that was era appropriate, mm -hmm. uh, and we wanted to do something that I think would put our actors into the mindset mm -hmm. of the characters. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, yeah. these are magic gloves. They can take my actor anywhere. I would like my actor, if I am the audience, stage right will be on your right, stage left will be on your left, upstage will be behind you. So I would like you to go upstage behind you and face upstage. Then I would like you to turn around and say your first line. Yeah, my, my ma ma major blocking is I want you to start with a crouch like a, a nice deep crouch mm, and good. then um, rise as you say your lines, mm -hmm. just establishing different power dynamics. So we're gonna start mm -hmm. lower and then you're gonna rise as you, you like start. It. Is everyone at places? Okay, so there's this really cool story in the Bible where Moses is tending to some sheep and he looks over and he sees a burning bush. And so like this bush is on fire, but it's not actually burning up. So it's kind of weird. So Moses goes on over to check it out. And as he gets closer, God starts to talk to him. And God makes sure that Moses understands in this moment, you are standing on holy ground. And then God starts to tell Moses about the Israelite people and the oppression that they're in, the slavery that they're in, and tells him that he is ready to step in and help them to do something about it. But he also tells Moses that he wants him to help. And so if this was you or me, we might be like, oh my gosh, like God wants me to help him free these people. What an incredible opportunity but that's not how Moses responded. Moses actually responded with questions for God. He was like, hey, but like, what if they don't believe me? What if they don't respond the way that we think they will? And God goes, hey, like, I have a plan. Just trust my plan and do what I tell you to do and it'll all work out. Still wasn't good enough for Moses. So then Moses says, hey, I actually am not well-spoken. Like, I don't know that I'm the right person for the job. And God's going, hey, I made your mouth. Like, I'm the one that put you together, trust me. You're the right guy for the job. Well, you see, Moses just continued to doubt himself when he had an opportunity to partner with God to do something special in the world. And it makes me wonder how often maybe you and I doubt ourselves in the same way. You see, when God created us, 
He created us exactly the way that He wanted us to be. I mean, He truly did create us as tens. Like He didn't create us as like a three or a five. He made you exactly the way He wanted you to be with the gifts He wanted you to have. And so next time you have an opportunity to truly partner with God and do something really special, don't worry so much about whether or not you have the right things to bring to the table. And just acknowledge that God gave you everything you need and that when we are partnering with Him, we can do some extraordinary things. 911 emergency services, what's your emergency? Fire! Fire! There's a single bush in the desert and it's a blazing inferno. And what's your location? I'm in the far side of the wilderness. Hey, that's where I live, out near Horan. And where are you in relation to the fire? I'm a safe distance from it, but there's a guy super up close to it. He's down by the bush without his shoes on. Where are his shoes? Well, he took them off, didn't he? He just took them right off. I don't know why he's not wearing shoes. Did he start the fire? The fire is coming from inside the bush. It's on fire, but it's not burning up. Is that possible? Can plants spontaneously catch fire like that? I don't think so. It's strange and I don't like it. He's been talking to this bush for some time now, really arguing with it, going back and forth. Meanwhile, the thing's still on fire. Well, we can send someone to oh, your look. Oh, oh, sir. He threw his staff down and it turned into a snake. He did what? It's a snake. Oh, oh he ran off. Wait, he's back. He's picking up the snake by its tail. He's going to get bit. You're going to get bit, Sir, Mr. don't approach. Oh, wait, nope. It's a staff again. How's he doing this? I don't know. How are you doing this? I don't know. Fire update. It's still burning. Sir, I need you to... Oh, his hand has leprosy. What? He reached into his cloak and now his hand is white as snow. All disgusting and such. Leprosy is very contagious. Wait, he put it back in his cloak and now it's back to normal. How are you doing this? Sir, we're sending someone to your location right okay, now. Okay, well, this guy is on a mission. He's turning around and looks like he's come to grips with his purpose and direction in life. That bush is still on fire, though. It's dwindling. I think I have an extinguisher. Should I go put it out? No, don't go put it out. Okay, I'm gonna go put it out. Sir, I need you to... Uh, he hung up. We can take our blindfolds off? Yes. Blindfolds off. Okay, here we go. <gasps> oh, hello! Oh, it's and... so bright. Okay, let's start the show. What a day to explore these underground caves. This is my first time. Really? I can't wait to get some cotton candy and see the clowns. I don't know what cave you're looking for, but one time I came here and saw some strange shadows on the cave walls. It was scary as cotton candy. Good thing I brought this. I use it to run away any untamed lions. Oh my gosh, beware! It's, uh, it's a good to be prepared. But hey, it's because it's your special day. <laughs> it's a good thing we were all dressed up. <laughs> yes, um, and I know you said no presents, but I got this. Wielding sword to kill the monster. Ooh, these are super rare. <laughs> and expensive. You shouldn't have. <laughs> Happy birthday. Now let's get lost in the underground passages. I can't wait to see some exotic animals. <laughs> oh, that was good. It was very, very, that very good. That was beautiful. Good. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, the dynamic between the two of you is wonderful. Beautiful work, <laughs> thank you. And I felt the shift, the shift in confidence. And I just loved how genuine you were and how excited you were. It was wonderful. If we, if I were to change anything, yes. I would just make this about four hours long. Just so if you could, mm. if, if you could just like rework the material you have to kind of mm -hmm. stretch, stretch it. Stretch. Yeah. You will get paid for your time. Oh, yeah, Oops. yeah. So how do you know God's direction for your life? Well, you start with a friendship with Him, and all good friendships involve listening and sharing. You do everything that you can to live your life the way that Jesus lived His. You also acknowledge that the ground you're walking on is holy ground, that God created the earth and He created your role in it. And He wants for you to do your best to make this place a better place. And if you're gonna do that well, then you better acknowledge that God did not create you to be a three. He created you to be a 10. 
And so use all the gifts he's given you to make this world a better place. Do your best to live a holy life and see where that plan takes you. And then you'll be able to say, I get my direction from God and I'm here for it. All right, so those scripts were not the same scripts. Completely different. I don't know how it worked out so I know. well. It's probably our actors. They were so amazing. They really committed. I love it. <laughs> so I really like directing, but I think we should leave it to the professionals. Or at the very least, ask to do it without blindfold on. Trying to direct your life without God is like trying to direct with a blindfold. It's a lot easier when you can see what direction he has for you. So listen and trust his game plan. And dream big. If you think that you're not enough, know that you can do great things with God. I wonder mm -hmm. how our director would feel if we left without saying the catchphrase. Let's go! Ah, run! Well, someone has to say it. Enjoy the ride. If you enjoyed this blindfold challenge, check out this other blindfold challenge where we try to paint each other's face while mm -hmm. blindfolded. I think that I did a really good job. I mean, I know that my butterfly totally looked like a butterfly. So check out the video on the screen and don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. Yeah, subscribe for butterflies. <laughs> if you like butterflies, subscribe.